I've known Alex for well, about 10 years, primarily in the vocation sector in TAFE. Uh, Alex has been uh, very much on the bleeding edge uh, in Australia when it comes to mobile technologies uh, and in, in um, students uh, gathering their own evidence probably through a mobile device and presenting it through a portfolio system. And if I, I think uh, Alex is going to be telling us a little bit about that line of work, if that's fair enough, Alex. Absolutely, that's that's exactly right. Well, uh, I'll just check my volumes there. Everybody can hear me at the back? Loud and clear. Yes. Loud and clear, that's excellent. Great. I'm coming to you from sunny Canberra where it's about six degrees and windy. Um, I'd like to share with you uh, um, an area of research that I'm involved with and I'll give you just a very 30 second background. I'm engaged as a professional associate through the University of Canberra. I'm involved with a number of companies who are developing uh, technologies which are body worn and uh, or head worn and these technologies create uh, an experience for the wearer and also capture data and interact intelligently with systems in order for uh, for tasks to be undertaken and for learning to, learning uh, uh, outcomes to be achieved or mapped. Um, some people may have navigated the uh, the uh, the online web and uh, understood the nature of Google Glass, and that's the only brand name that I'll I'll land on people to kind of think about. But I've been involved in uh, across all sectors uh, the use of body worn video and the capture of video for a purpose. So what I'm going to do at the moment is actually share with you uh, a diagrammatic um, representation of the key facets of that particular uh, system and uh, walk you through uh, what's actually happening in reality uh, in a number of sectors uh, and look at perhaps some of the key, I've mapped here a few key points that I think might be important to consider. Uh, picture uh, the, the class setting or the learning setting of the future, not only within an institutional organizational framework, but also within a workplace format and also or fr uh, setting and also uh, in a very unconventional or um, everyday setting as well. Now, in terms of the, uh, the, the prospects of bringing your own device and mapping that mobile device into a system where the data can be captured can be reused, uh, can be mapped for uh, accreditation or for uh, assessment purposes and where it's student-centered perhaps poses a, a quite a demanding and uh, new picture for uh, where we're heading uh, and uh, the evidence of that is in uh, currently within the nature of e-portfolios, learning management systems and content management systems client relation management systems and organizational CMSs that all come together to um, provide a, a data trail and a data engagement with learners who are predominantly um, um, in a uh, flexible mode of delivery. So what I've done there is I've added in a few other, uh, another dimension to that and that is where a service is provided for uh, learners to uh, d uh, securely transmit data and when I say data I'm talking about rich media data uh, that is um, inherent with metadata, uh, location aware tagging uh, and perhaps a range of other attributes uh, that pinpoint uh, where a learner uh, may be um, engaged uh, with other systems so systems talking to that mobile device that, that, that that a learner is either wearing or carrying. An example of that may be that the learner is undertaking a task where they are required to capture from a first person perspective um, a range of uh, attributes, um, perhaps it's a two minute clip of them engaging with uh, some machinery uh, which uh, shows their competency or shows their level of engagement for any other purpose. That uh, data is then from their uh, head worn device then transmitted live straight through a media server uh, into a CMS which is then accessible not only through the wearable device but also through a mobile device such as an iPad or a phone or a, 
uh, some on Android system. Uh, that uh, that handheld or that that access to that uh, touch-based environment is known as a video portfolio or a, really, a rich media portfolio, and it's accessible uh, not only through a social networking environment, uh, which would allow that individual to share and aggregate the information, but allows that learner uh, student-centered control of their own data to then attribute licensing, um, uh, Creative Commons, or uh, total copyright on their on their data, and uh, voluntarily or um, under under direction submit that data for assessment via the e-portfolio or via their learning management system. Uh, of course, uh, the what the previous speaker raised a very good point around. Uh, the nature of um, uh, where uh, the intellectual property of the learner's data is um, is is highly considered, uh, but also a real challenge to our existing systems around how and what data and which uh, ownership uh, cycle that is inherent, and what and what um, uh, motivations the organisation has to retain that data, or in fact restrict access to the data in the future. So the, the nature of the technologies and the systems that I'm talking of are both strategic engagement and they are about building capacity for e-learning. Uh, mobile learning is a very um, well-established domain of engagement around uh, the, the principle, principles of connectivism and the nature of student-generated content is a very um, apparent uh, uh, need for for all for all organisations and educators alike to uh, grapple with as content uh, as we've just heard is being disseminated, aggregated, and being distributed across uh, social networks where the intellectual property is owned by the owner of the, in the social network. I have a range of uh, clients that we've worked with where we've implemented the use of uh, ELG as an e-portfolio social networking mechanism that connects in with learning management systems such as Moodle and uh, Blackboard and others and allows a learner to interface with a video portfolio application. Uh, it is an app on their phone. They can point, shoot and uh, retain and, and replay their data through their mobile device, their phone. But they can also put on a set of um, digital eyewear. The digital eyewear has an augmented uh, facility with a, where intelligent information is provided to that learner, where location data is provided to the learner, and perhaps even uh, location aware data is provided to the learner such as mapping uh, and prompts and learning and uh, point, points of assessment which are uh, rendered live to that learner depending on where they are in terms of geolocation. Uh, at this point um, that type of engagement um, is being is being touted as known as educative arrangement, where uh, it's not a system; it's an arrangement with the learner. No matter where they are, uh, they can engage with their learning content, capture their content, engage, um, mobilize, essentially leverage their content, uh, assign licensing copyright to that um, content. Um, and then submit that into their e-portfolio for future consideration. There's also the capacity with a number of these apps to uh, friend uh, their colleagues, their, their uh, classmates, uh, their, their, their fellow tutors, their lecturers, and to be able to submit data privately on a one-to-one -one basis or a one-to-group basis, uh, very much just through their handheld technology being their phone. Um, Inherent with this is a signal, and the signal is, as part of my research, is what are the socio-ethical implications of these types of technologies, particularly in an educative uh, space. What will we be doing when learners do rock up to our lectures or into our learning spaces and are wearing uh, location-aware uh, camera-based technology, which also has the capacity overtly to be recording video and camera-based data. I've recently returned from an IEEE conference in Toronto, Canada, where I've uh, engaged with some of the world leaders on uh, the nature of these wearable technologies and uh, this advent 
in the next uh, uh, couple of years will we'll signal a real change in the way that we engage with each other within technology. Uh, this idea of staring down at screens and touching them with our fingers is, uh, is fast moving to a wearable context uh, where we can interact with these via gestural control, voice control, and more importantly, eye control. It may sound like science fiction, but it is actually the centre of my PhD, which I'm almost uh, relatively close to finishing uh, my interviews. And uh, there is uh, a, a, a rapid shift in the way that providers are moving towards mobilising content, particularly learner-centred, student-generated content, uh, into a space that can be monetized and that can be utilised for uh, teaching, learning and assessment. So Lee, that's a bit of a, uh, that's a, a seven minute, as I've got my timer on, seven minute um, overview of the nature of the technologies and the systems that I'm involved in for teaching, learning assessment, particularly in a student-generated context. And um, I welcome any comments, um, uh, any last minute fears at this time of the day, um, or any, any other uh, points that I might not have covered that people might not, uh, would like to know about.